Sparky Sparky Boom Man. See, I can remember that, and I can say that, and I can pronounce it. More names like that. <laughs> So, don't you guys know that whenever we say a name wrong, it everyone goes nuts? It brings us such joy. It brings us such joy to see you get so angry. No, we should remember the names. We should, you know, that that's not fair to the people who create the characters and, you know, someone who just doesn't remember uh, uh, how to pronounce it. But, you know, I think, like, I was heading out to come here, actually, and, and there's a power outage uh, resulting in the Lord of the Rings one getting out late, so I had to rush then. I had to rush the sibling rivalry and these Avatar videos. I'm going through and I'm packing, getting all this stuff together. I'm going through my emails, make sure there's nothing else important about the flight or anything. It just says, here's how you pronounce it's Eero or whatever. I'm just like, you know, it's not number one on my priorities right now. <laughs> so, uh, but no, we should remember. We should know the name. So, uh, uh, but regardless, I probably won't forget Sparky Sparky Boom Man. Uh, with that said, okay, this is The Runaway. Uh, and it's a Toph-centered episode. I found Toph's, like, really popular, uh, which is, uh, I find very interesting. Oh, not, not that surprising. There aren't a ton of characters like that. Uh, it, it's got some, it's got some good jokes in it. The, the blind jokes especially in this one really made me laugh. I think the only, you kind of know they're going to do blind jokes. The only one that really ever made me laugh was in, uh, when they were looking for the library. And was it? She says something like, I, s I found it. I'm like, what? Where? And she's like, oh, that's what I'll say when we eventually do find it. And she just does a, and that's. It's hilarious. Uh, but that's the only time I laughed really hard. There were some really good ones in this one. <laughs> the uh, Her playing dumb as the blind person was great. You know, I mean, even really over, like, trying to find the bowls and stuff. I mean, that was great. Uh, every time they whipped out a piece of paper, and, you know, uh, tough. You know, do you know what this is? And she's like, well, I'm assuming a piece of paper, but it's what's on the piece of paper that's important. And then uh, Katara does it again. <laughs> and she's like, what is with you people? And it works so well because I think I, for a half a second, forget too that she can't read it. <laughs> or when they write the letter on the, the hawk uh, 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 or the bird. I like that there's a bird now. I think that's cool. Um, and they send it to uh, Katara acting like it's an apology letter, and she's like, she can't write! <laughs> so, I... Very funny stuff in this episode. Uh, we... There's a very... It's funny, because there's this really tender scene, like, probably one of the most tender scenes in there, and that's when... Uh, what was it? Sokka... Sokka and uh, Toph are talking about why Katara is so motherly and why it's important. And, boy, writing dialogue like having Sokka forget his mother's face, I mean, that's that's heavy stuff. That's, like, really heavy stuff. That's a hard thing for a kid to admit moment. And, and even, and the way it comes around to that when he thinks of mother, even the term mother, he thinks Katara now. And of course she's in there and she's listening to the whole thing, but it's... It, and the way Toffs are opens up too about, you know, suddenly her connection with her parents or the lack thereof and the choice she's made. And, and again, knowing that Katara's down there hearing this too and her reactions and the animation of her reactions, uh, all of that was just so wonderful and just a really good uh, emotionally fueled moment and just perfectly done uh really one of the strongest in my opinion that this show has had a lot of really good strong emotional moments uh i thought that one was very very uh nicely done but then okay not a but it's not a but the moment is still a great moment it's just funny because a few moments later we have we have katara and we have Toph in jail and what even was the scene? I can't remember. She's like, you know, I suddenly thought of my parents and how much I missed them. And she gets teary-eyed and Katara hugs her for a second. And it's so rushed. And it's, you didn't need that. I, I don't, because you know she's going to send the letter at the end anyway. And I think it's, sort of get, it's gotten out with the scene before where Katara's listening. I, I don't think you need that. But again, that's, I'm, I'm only doing that because it's, 
Avatar and not your everyday kids family show. So I, uh, again, that's, I'm only saying it for that reason, because I, I could see it's a million other kid shows and I give it a pass. I only say it because it's Avatar and it's so fucking good. Um... Well, on that note, <laughs> the other thing I thought was a little gimmicky was opening up with uh, Toph getting captured and Katara say, you know, you brought this on yourself. It's like three days earlier. I hate those. I I, I don't know what it is. I think I'm just tired of it, maybe. Um, maybe it's actually not a bad idea, but I, I've just seen it so much. I'm like, well, we know it's not really going to add up to this, or we know something else is going on. I mean, hell, she's caught in a net, and of course she's going to get out of the fucking net if, if this wasn't a scam. Um, so, but that's a pet peeve. Um, <clears throat> a, a lot of kids watching, I'm sure, would be like, whoa, what's going on? So, uh, that, that, that's a, just a pet peeve thing. And then the only other thing, you know, I'm talking about a lot of negative things about this episode. It's a good episode. Like I said, it's a very... Uh, emotionally fueled episode and for whatever reason I'm just picking out these little nitpicks but it bothered me that Aang said I give you the Avatar's promise that I will not scam anymore and it's just a direct lie and again no he's a kid got it but first of all he's not doing it to an enemy he's doing it to his best friend not just his best friend like his love and he just straight up lies on his Avatar promise or whatever and if that's even a thing, probably not, but he made it sound like a thing. <laughs> uh, but he broke a promise, and he broke it the millisecond he was away from her. And that, I mean, okay, he's a kid, but he grew up with monks. Monks, come on, don't, it's, it's a promise. I, oh, I, I take promises very seriously. So when somebody, it's just like, I promise, and then just immediately scraps, and I'm like, okay, that's, that's really unlikable. That just drives me nuts. So, it, now, if there was another way around it, if he said later, well, I never said I would do scams this way or that way, if he found a way around it, that would be very smart and very, uh, like I say, even a monk technically could get away with that, even though they know they're kind of, you know, manipulating. But it, but it would count. He technically wouldn't be lying. But there's none of that. He just straight up lies. And that, I didn't like that. That, that I don't know. I expected more of you, Ang. <laughs> so, uh, but again, that stuff, that's, uh, that's the minor stuff in this. Um, th this episode, like I say, it's a, uh, the, the emotion is what really rides through on it. We, we get, of course, a little bit of action, uh, near the end. Not the best action, uh, compared to the other ones, but again, we're not... It's not the focus of this one. It's not supposed to be a super action episode. Um, again, good comedy. I'm just thinking there's like a ton of funny moments where I like laughed out loud. I, lo I love the scams. The scams were great. Uh, and I love the way, I love the way she would manipulate the rock back into the bowl. I love the way, uh, I, I love the editing when uh, Sokka comes out as whatever the angry either father or brother, whatever that sees, uh, tough hit by the carriage that they manipulate you just see him fold his arms and then you see a money bag and another money bag and another and another and another and he goes okay <laughs> that's hilarious I mean, it's incredibly funny uh so it's still a really good episode it's got great comedy it's got really good uh uh really good uh emotional center to it and and it it evens out well because honestly i was watching this like how is tough not I mean, I know she doesn't get along with her parents, but come on, how is there no remorse at all? How are there no feelings of of her folks? So, it's, so I'm glad that it does sort of come back and she does start to address it. Because, I mean, even though I know she's younger, I know she's, you know, like I said, a, a bit of a thug. <laughs> like a, uh, like the wise thug, <laughs> sort of. Um, but... Well, that's the only way I can describe her. Okay? Everything's just like, she doesn't like, she's like, Bleh, just like, punch. Um, that's part of the charm, too. So, I'm glad they addressed that. And, uh, I'm trying to think what else. Yeah, it, it, just an all-around, uh, just all-around good episode. Um, some problems here and there, but like I said, I mean, that's, that's me really, really analyzing it. I, I, I still think it, it came out really, really well. So, um... Yeah, that's about it, and I'll see you in the next one.